Welcome to Great Plains State Park. I'm Dino Lolly. And I'm Lauren Nelson. This park is the perfect place for you to set up base camp as you explore one of the oldest mountain ranges on Earth. Maybe it's because I'm from this part of the state, but I find the rugged beauty here to be something special. This park is nestled in the rocky country neighboring the Wichita Mountains along the shore of Tom Steed Reservoir with 6,000 plus acres of managed wildland. This quiet park with all the rosy, weathered remnants of 500 million year old rock against the azure sky create timeless vistas in any season of the year. Thanks to our guide, park manager Delilah Aguilar for those beautiful shots of the park. As Black History Month draws to a close, we want to take a moment to show you a place that tells the story of an ugly moment in Oklahoma history that has become the impetus for reconciliation and renewal. Jason Grubbs takes us to Greenwood Rising. On the corner of Greenwood and Archer is Greenwood Rising, a new center housing the story of this historic district. From Black Wall Street to the 1921 race massacre and a rebuilding of a community, it's an immersive experience by design and we intentionally designed it so that when people leave, you cannot leave the same way you came. It was amazing. Kimberly Lewis felt a range of emotions. She was impressed and moved. I just was really overwhelmed by all of the uh, pictures and videos here and I really enjoyed it. Visitors start with a film produced locally featuring Greenwood business owners and community leaders. During it, Maya Angelou reads her 1978 poem, Still I Rise. But still like dust, I arrive. It sets you up visually for what you're about to see. The tour continues after crossing railroad tracks, taking you back to the district's early days. Figures from the past appear in the mirrors of TC's barber shop, telling stories of life back then. They could have spent their money somewhere else. Could, but they didn't. And then the history of how this area, this Oklahoma territory became a paradise for black citizens. Beyond the reflections, large sections of walls are waiting, designed to look destroyed as if it were 1921 and you're standing in Greenwood. Old recordings from actual survivors of the race massacre tell their stories. Saying I was nine years old, I was seven years old, I was 17 years old, and what they remembered. People begging for their homes and businesses not to be burned. The way that they presented it, you could, it was like you were right there. You can feel their terror and their sadness. It's hard to explain how you feel. You get a rush of different emotions when you see something like that. And uh, to know that it was actual victims and survivors, it's, uh, like I said, it's a different feeling. Philip Ruff and Aaron Sheckles are visiting from Louisville, Kentucky. Like many, they learned about Greenwood later in life. It's really important. You have to know your history. You know, if you want to improve, uh, you have to know your history. So once I was in Tulsa, I was like, you know, I'm going to go visit the, the site, and that's why we're here today. After the destruction, you'll see a rebirth of Greenwood, showcased in this room. You see how these people, with that spirit, that Black Wall Street spirit, rebuilt their community and made it actually bigger and economically better. As you move through the center, you'll notice the use of a lot of digital video, audio, and photographs. These here show before and after of what Greenwood looked like then and now. Pictures taken from 1971, 1921, 1919, 1939, and then it transforms right before your eyes and shows you exactly where that exact same picture is and what's here today. Today is where the tour ends. This discussion space is used for talks about what was learned and where the community goes from here. Visitors are welcome to leave a commitment. Once you learn history, what are you going to do with it? And so we challenge people, hey, now that you know this, what are you going to do? I think when you come here, you will get a, a perspective of everything from the beginning to the end and how we're trying to continue to improve our race relations in the community. At Greenwood Rising in downtown Tulsa, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. Greenwood Rising is open seven days a week and admission is free for the first year. You do need to book a ticket and you can do that by going to TravelOK.com forward slash Greenwood Rising. It's classic literature based here in Oklahoma that sparked the young adult genre. Tulsa author S.C. E. Hinton's novel, of course, went on to become a very, very good movie, and that movie launched the career of several members of the Brat Pack. 
The Outsiders, the movie, of course, starred C. Thomas Howell, Emilio Estevez, Tom Cruise, Patrick Swayze, Diane Lane, and the rest of the teen gang all went on to have memorable careers in Hollywood. But the house in Tulsa that was made famous then, for many years, was left forgotten, but not anymore. 2009, while on tour in Tulsa, rap artist Danny Boy O'Connor remembered... Tulsa, Tulsa, why does that ring a bell? And I thought, my God, I think The Outsiders was filmed and written here. And he found the house. And what happens is, is I create a hobby based off of finding this house. I took a photo out in front of this house that day. Always having a love of pop culture, he kept coming back, and then it turned into a passion project for him. The house was in disrepair, and he wanted to rescue it, so he bought it. Things evolved and kept moving forward, and finally... The official opening of the museum, we cut the ribbon in August of 19. And it, I bought it in sometime in 2016. So it took like three and a half years. He spent years collecting memorabilia, driven by determination, love, and a goal to bring this house back to life. I'm happy to tell you that we have the largest collection of movie screen worn, movie memorabilia, one of ones, uh, books, posters. I'm, there is no collection on earth that could even come close to what, what I have here. People thank me all the time for doing what I've done uh, for this museum and this house, but in, in reality, the community and the fans have really uh, built this place up for me. This house is a significant part of pop culture history. The stellar cast was pretty much a group of unknowns at that time. But like any part of a museum like this, there are favorites. For a lot of female tourists, they always ask about Rob Lowe. They want to see the towel. That is the number one requested scene. And the number one thing in my collection that's dearest and nearest to my heart is the Matt Dillon leather jacket that we ended up getting from Essie Hint. From signatures on the walls to wardrobe, call sheets, books, records, almost any kind of memorabilia associated with the movie can be seen. And people come here from all over the world. Australia, I've got people from uh, New Zealand, I've got people from all over Europe. We just had friends from Houston in town last week and we brought them here and they, we were here for three hours and they were overwhelmed with the excitement and all the different adventures that um, they experienced here. Yeah. You come in and, and there's this house on the corner and you're like, okay, that's interesting. And then you come inside and the authenticity of, of the clothes, the photographs, the signatures on the walls, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and you can come here another day and there might be something different. Before you leave, be sure and visit their impressive gift shop, too. Tulsa is Danny's home now, but he has more plans for the future. So I, I, I actively am looking for anything as it pertains to Essie Hinton's legacy or the movies that she made from the books that she's written, and uh, whether that's from Rumblefish, Tex, The Outsiders, what have you. Uh, the collection never stops growing. I never stop looking. You can find out how to visit the Outsiders House Museum in Tulsa at TravelOK.com. You can contact the museum directly to arrange a tour of other Outsider film sites around Tulsa. What a great piece of Oklahoma history. I'm so glad it's being saved. I am too, and of course all the credit goes to Danny, whose passion for the movie and of course the, the novel itself made him put a lot of time and money into the project. We're grateful for that. Now coming up, we head from Great Plains State Park where we are today, now we head to my hometown of Lawton to the Museum of the Great Plains. And then if you love animals, you're going to love this destination in Seminole. <laughs> and they say you have to try the garbage omelet at this Enid Eatery that has been serving up mouth-watering breakfast for going on 50 years. Be right back. The free Oklahoma Outdoor Guide is your North Star. Lighting your way to jaw-dropping beauty and heart-pumping adventure. Order or download yours today at TravelOK.com. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma. We're at Great Plains State Park in Mountain Park. Now you can spend the night here at an RV or tent camp site. You can go fishing in Lake Tom Steed. And there's also hiking and biking trails. And there's plenty of wildlife for you to see, so keep an eye out. Bald eagles, all kinds of migratory birds like the white pelicans, and one random mule deer way out of his normal range. Our next destination is all about getting up close and personal with the animal kingdom. Our Shelly Mills takes us to Nomad's Animal Encounter in Seminole. 
fully grown. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he'll be a big boy. <laughs> 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 Crazy kid. Visitors here at Nomad's Animal Encounter are having a great time on this sunny afternoon. How often do you get to take a selfie with a zebra? <laughs> or a water buffalo or other exotic type animal. This farm of sorts is full of adventure and learning. Um, we try to teach people the safest ways to, to handle them, to pet them, uh, to feed them and interact with them. There are lemurs, a lot of them, turkeys, foxes, and so many others. This is a second chance home for many of these animals. <laughs> We're never going to rip anything out of the wild. We look for something that's already out there, that's been in captivity already. Like D.O.G., the coyote. Some people called us up from Montana and they said, hey, we've got a coyote, we'd love to donate it to you. Um, we tried to raise it as a personal pet, but you know, things aren't working out. He was too tame to survive the wild, but too wild to be a pet. Rhett, the Quatamundi, was originally a pet, but you have to be careful around him. He's our little thief, though. He'll, uh, he'll steal cell phones, wallets, keys, anything he can get a hold of. Luca the lemur is much more friendly <laughs> and tends to be the crowd favorite. Others may look intimidating, but are actually very sweet. Uh, so Freya came here when she was seven weeks old. Nomads is open for group tours of 10 or less. Each group will spend about two hours touring the grounds, meeting and interacting with the dozens of animals that live here. The interaction is so much fun. It was a great experience and the kids seem to have really enjoyed it. Guests do have to sign a waiver and should know that the terrain can be pretty uneven in a few areas. It's a very rural area, but guests say it is well worth the drive. We had to drive about an hour and I would have drove Qualiter to come here. I think everybody likes to have a chance to pet and love on the animals, so I'm having a good time with that. I think it's a good day trip. One that is sure to be memorable. In Seminole County, Shelly Mills, Discover, Oklahoma. You can plan your visit to Nomad's Animal Encounter in Seminole at TravelOK.com. Next, we're headed about 45 minutes east of here to Lauren's hometown. To visit a special museum where the story of the Great Plains comes to life. A visual history of the life and people of the Great Plains is on display at the Museum of the Great Plains in Lawton. We um, explore the history of man on the Great Plains, of humans on the Great Plains. So we start about 11,000 years ago with the first evidence of people on the plains, and then we go right through the present. We have a strong focus on Lawton and southwest Oklahoma and the southern plains in particular. All of our exhibits through the museum have interactive components. So we mean for people to, to have fun while they're here and learn, you know, about the history. The interactive exhibits begin as soon as you step inside. When you come into the first gallery, we have the floor map. So we try to define for people what the Great Plains is, get that image in their mind. One of the next things you come across is going to be our terrible Tuesday um, tornado theater which is um, kind of an immersive uh, account of the Wichita Falls tornado in 1979. From life on the cattle trail to Native American artifacts and exhibits, you can immerse yourself into the culture of this special area in our state. Indigenous people are a big part of our story here. We discuss about where the uh, tribes or the groups um, that ended up here, where they came from, uh, what life was like before European contact, uh, what it was like after European contact and then with uh, settlement, allotment and all those issues. Right again, you know, right up to the modern day. We actually have a tent that kind of uh, was like what the tent city that was established here before Lawton had permanent buildings. We have uh, an area about cowboys where you can pretend you're sleeping out on the range, um, play guitar, pretend you're cooking an evening meal. You can even experience what it would be like on a real dig site as you search for fossils. We have a dig site and that date that um, portrays the oldest um, human occupation in this area that we know of. So you can actually dig for uh, mastodon bones that are set into that exhibit. And take a step back in time in the old fashioned general store. The, the idea is to use the merchandise in the store to um, fill people's orders or you can take shopping lists if you're going to you know, build a stool or bake a cake or whatever, take those shopping lists and find the things in the store that um, you would need. Upstairs is a great place for interactive fun for kids of all ages. We call that Upper Floor Explore. It's our mezzanine area 
of the museum. The things that we have on the mezzanine area of the museum are really geared toward um, STEAM, or science, technology, engineering, um, art, and math. If you visited before, you'll want to plan a return trip because there are a few new things to see. Of course, we have the TP that we're beside right now, which um, is another interactive exhibit. We chose a canvas TP, and it's kind of a generic planes TP, although it is a four pole like the Comanche would have set up their TPs. You can go inside it and pretend that you're, you know, it's night and sleep in there or bring food in there or come out to the campfire or do whatever you want. So it's just another kind of fun space where while you're interacting with it, hopefully you're going to learn things. In the theater, we um, change periodically what's being shown in there. It's a space that people can wander into. Um, it runs all the time. If they like what they see, they're welcome to sit down for as long as they want. They can be in there for a minute. They can be in there all afternoon if they want. Plan your trip to the Museum of the Great Plains, a hands-on experience of what life was like on the Great Plains way back when and even today. Museum of the Great Plains in Lawton is just one of hundreds of great museums across the state. Find out more at TravelOK.com. And up next, we're on the road to Broken Bow, where three friends decided to open a winery with a simple business plan. If no one comes, we'll drink the wine. But people did drink the wine, and they still are. We're headed to Girls Gone Wine next. And a cafe where breakfast is king. Still ahead on Discover Oklahoma. What's inside our free Oklahoma travel guide? Artistry for all five senses, magic around every bend, and powerful waves of inspiration. Order or download yours at TravelOK.com. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma. We are coming to you from Great Plains State Park. It's located between Lawton and Altus. The park includes the old ruins of the Gold Bells Gold Mine. This is actually the old mine shaft. It was established in the early 1900s. There was a mini gold rush around here until they figured out there's really no gold. No gold, but you know who did strike gold with their business plan? Three friends in Broken Bow. They created a top destination. It's called Girls Gone Wine, and Darren Brown tells us their very crazy story. There was no plan. It was, we're going to have fun. We're going to, if no one comes, we'll drink the wine. People around town were taking bets at how long we would last. Yes. Um, not only our business, but our friendship. Serious. Yes, no, serious. Yeah. They, want, they didn't think our business would last. They didn't think our friendship would last. And It turns out those folks were wrong. Girls Gone Wine is now one of the top tourist draws in southeast Oklahoma. Because what's happened that we didn't plan for was three is a magic number. It, it really is. And in, it's easy because if we're trying to decide where to go or what to do, decisions in business, if two of us say they like the idea, it's sort of a done, almost a done deal. Consensus comes quick. Almost as quickly as customers come through the door here. With Beaver's Bend State Park and well over a thousand cabins for rent nearby, this is the place to be. If you like your wine in a glass, in a bottle, frozen in a cup, or on a cute little gift, Girls Gone Wine has you covered. Just here to relax and have some fun, drink some wine, sit by the campfire, enjoy the weather, a lot of fun old stories being told, enjoying each other's company. We don't get to do this very often. There are plenty of wines here for the tasting, over a dozen, and you can even mix up your own. Uh, once you decide which wine that we have that you want to mix up, we will send you over to the, to the making it room, we call it. <laughs> yep, that's what they call it, because that's where you make the wine, of course. After the juice, yeast, and much stirring, the wines come here to rest. After six to nine weeks, you come back to bottle, cork, and foil the wine with your own personalized label. You know, the coolest and newest place to be here at Girls Gone Wine is the G-Spot. They even have signs. The VIP <laughs> tasting. It's $25 a person. It's the only time you have to pay for a tasting. But you get to come into a, a loungy area. We have little uh, purple sofas and little plush chairs, and you get to sit down and be waited on. The girls tell me the spot has hosted a number of bachelorette parties, 
and even one bachelor party. It's all about having a good time, mm -hmm. and I think that translates, um, you know, to the customer experience. More fun and more wine? <laughs> I will drink to that. In Hochitown, discovering Oklahoma, I'm Darren Brown. Girls Gone Wine Boutique Winery, Lounge, and Gift Shop will schedule a private tasting or you can stop in at noon to 8 Friday and Saturday, noon to 4 on Sunday. You can find this winery and many others around Oklahoma at TravelOK.com. At our next stop, the local favorite, the Garbage Omelette, or there's the Tex-Mex and the Chicken Club. Yes. <laughs> or how about the big fluffy pancakes with the berries and the cream? This is killing me. We are headed to an Enid mainstay where they'll feed you all day, but their breakfast is everybody's favorite. There are some things you just can't contain. Oklahoma Today Magazine is bursting with culture. Mind-blowing restaurants, trips, adventures, and so much more. Open your copy, then hit the open road. Unleash your curiosity. Set your spirit free. Subscribe today for only $14.95. Oklahoma Today Magazine. Break through the ordinary. Welcome back to Great Plains State Park, just about 35 miles west of Lawton. This is a very cool park. You have 6,400 acres to explore here. And you don't have to wait till the summer to do it. Just find a winter day where there's nice weather. In fact, we've done a little bit of hiking. I've worked up an appetite, burned off some calories, and now I want some breakfast. Hey, me too. <laughs> or should I say, we too, which is the name of the beloved Enid Cafe where we're headed next, courtesy of Dean Stein. <laughs> He's never coming back. Every morning, the crowd fills up the dining room at We Too. This is a must stop to eat in Enid. All to get a taste of some southern comfort food. It's just good to start the day off with a good, fulfilling breakfast, I hope. Derek Waddell's grandfather opened the restaurant in 1972, and it's been owned by the family ever since, four generations now. We would drive from Medford down here to eat on Saturday mornings. Mary Burt has been coming here for more than 25 years, first with her grandfather and now her husband. I don't think in all the years that I've eaten here I've ever had anything that was not just the best. Derek and his wife Rebecca kept the same menu, but have added to it over the years to include more omelet choices and more toppings to their burgers. I like the cozy atmosphere and the food is outrageous. It's just amazing. Uh, the burgers are fantastic. You can't beat the breakfast here in town. It's just wonderful. While the menu is extensive, We Too is considered the home of the garbage omelet, a top seller. It's quite popular. Uh, it's got uh, ham, sausage, bacon, tomatoes, bell peppers, onions, cheese. The breakfast options are vast. You can get eggs any way you want them, breakfast meats, biscuits and gravy, even a cinnamon roll the size of a dinner plate. If you want something unique though, go for the schnitzel. Half a hamburger bun, eight ounces of uh, hamburger meat, a slice of cheese, an over easy egg, and then smothered in chili cheese and onions again. There's also the big nasty, two biscuits topped with chicken fried chicken and then smothered in sausage gravy. The kitchen opens at 6 a.m. seven days a week and whether you're hungry for breakfast or lunch, they're prepared to cook you anything off the menu at any time. We serve the entire menu all day. So you can come in and get a chicken fry or a hamburger or pork chops, six o'clock in the morning. The home cooking and atmosphere here keeps the customers coming back, making it a gathering spot for the community. We have so many customers that come in and know everybody and they just walk around and socialize and it's just a great atmosphere. There's even a room saved for the local war veterans. It's super friendly, everybody is, and uh, food's good. Uh, they let us have our own little room back here and bring our pictures in and tell lies and stories and just, it's great. Not only our food, we've got such a great staff and we are so close, like a family. Enid's a great community. Uh, the people are amazing here. Discovering Oklahoma and Enid, I'm Deanne Stein. Enid's We Too restaurant is one of hundreds you can find at Travel OK. In fact, if you search breakfast, you'll find more than 600 listings around the state.
And while you are at Travel OK, click on free brochures to get your copy of the Discover Oklahoma Destination Dining Guide. You'll get it by mail in about two weeks, and again, it's free. Hey, be sure and join us next week. We're headed to the Apache Casino in Lawton, where the chef is going to personally cook us dinner. And you can set your inner child free at one of Oklahoma's favorite children's museums. It might still be winter, but this iconic drive-in is already open and ready for your private party. And we'll make our own pottery and dine at a favorite Tulsa restaurant with a great new look. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma.